Last night, this is the last night. What, what a great week it was for me, and I hope it was for you as well. Who have been here like the entire, the entire week, every night? Just let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Okay, okay. Uh, at least you lose just one night. Let me see the hands. Just one night. Okay, two nights. <clears throat> Okay, that's all right, that's all right. It's very good to be here again, to look at all the story of Jesus, look at all the encounter that Jesus, Jesus had, and it's always good for, um, for us to open up your, our Bibles. I don't know if you have this routine at your home, just open your Bible and just read some, some story, some um, part from the Gospels, <clears throat> but today we'll, we will try to do that again. Every night we've been opening our Bibles, doing this exercise to read with the people that are on, on our side. So open your Bible in Matthew chapter 14. If you have your Bible, just pick it up your Bible now or your app. And open your Bible on, the, on Matthew chapter 14. And we will read from verse 22, and we will go until verse 33. 33, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, and we go until verse 33, okay? Just, you can read with the person that, that is on your side, okay? Just read it out loud. It's better when we read out loud. So read, I will give you three minutes, four minutes for you to read with, with, with them, okay? Matthew chapter 14, and we will read verse 22 until verse 33, okay? Okay, finished? All right, okay. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, and please bless us with your Holy Spirit right now. May we build this church right now. Be filled with your Spirit. Be filled with your, with your hand touching our hearts. And may we find you may we encounter you this night this sabbath bless me use me as a vessel right now to preach and to teach in jesus name we pray amen so friday night this is almost we're coming to the end of the week and <clears throat> throughout the week we saw some 
some encounters that, that Jesus had with some of the disciples, some, some people that were sick, some people that were needing his power in their lives. And today will not, will not be different. And the title of the message today is The Storm. And we saw one of the craziest or one of the most impressive encounters that Jesus had with the, with the disciples. Most impressive because lots of the miracles and the encounters that Jesus had with people was some kind of a miracle that maybe some magi magician could manipulate something to do something similar, maybe. But this one, this one is different. Walk on the water, this is another level, <laughs> you know? And the interesting thing is that Jesus is making <clears throat> this miracle here not in a presence of the multitudes, not in a presence of lots of people, just his disciples. It was just his disciples. And we saw that Jesus uh, made the disciples go into the water, go into the river. And he said, get into the boat and go ahead and just go in, you know, the direction of the other side. Just go there and landed in Gennesaret. Just go. It's a little bit weird request from Jesus in that moment. But, you know, the disciples um, had lots of times with Jesus. So they know that when Jesus says something, they must have to obey. They must have to hear what Jesus is, is telling them. So Jesus said, just go. Go get into the boat and go. I will dismiss the crowd here. And I will encounter you after that. Well, this is very, very you know, a strange request for them. You will encounter us, but how? May Jesus have another boat to just to follow them? Or what, what's going to, you know, what's going to happen here? How Jesus will encounter us in the middle of the, of the water? Well, they don't know. They just obeyed, and they went to, straight to the river, got on a boat, and went to, straight to the river. And in verse 20, 24, they said, the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind that was against it. So it's almost like they're starting some kind of storm. Because the waves, even today, the waves and the wind in that river over there, it's very strong sometimes. So it was, it was the, this, this kind of... of of sin over there. The boat was there, the wind was strong, the waves started to become big, you know? The boat was already a considerable distance from the shore. And shortly before down, verse 25, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. The first thing here is that when the disciples start to obey Jesus, there was lots of things against, against them. The waves were against them. The wind was against them as well. Just, just before they started to obey Jesus, the wind and the waves was against them. And it was not easy for them because they were you know, a little bit far from where Jesus was. They were a little bit far and, you know, trying to reach Jesus and said, uh-oh, there, there, there comes another storm. And you remember the previous storm that Jesus just put this storm to calm down. You remember this one? There's another story. So they have this in mind. The boat, the waves, the wind, and said, but there is a difference here because Jesus is not here in the boat. You know, so we are terrified. But on top of that, on top of that, they saw someone walk, walking on the lake. Can you imagine that? They were terrified because of the storm, 
and you know, searching for help, and they saw someone walking on the lake. This is a, you know, some kind of a terror story. <laughs> you know? And say, uh oh, what is that? What is that? And they said, it's a ghost. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Oh my God, on top of this storm, there is a ghost. It is interesting that, you know, because I'm just putting myself in, in their shoes and say, you could have imagined that this ghost would be Jesus, right? Because they saw, they saw so many miracles. They saw so many things that Jesus did with them and through them. And while he, they were with, with him, but they were afraid. They were very afraid and said, it's a ghost. It is something that maybe doesn't exist in our world, but like in a spiritual world, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, undefined creature or I don't know. I don't know their concept of a ghost. Our concept of a ghost is what? It's something like with a, like a white blanket, you know, on top of it, like flying around or something like that. Like, I don't know, like a, a, a cloud, a, a fog, a, yeah, some kind of that, you know. There is a, there's lots of movies, né? <laughs> lots of movies that <laughs> they have this example, but they saw a ghost. And here is top to reflect about this. Because the way that Jesus treated people in all of those encounters that we are analyzing, we see that Jesus really saw the people just as they were. Not as a ghost, not as something that doesn't exist. You remember the man with disabled, bagged over there 30 for 40 years, and people just passing, passing through him and said, there is no one. This guy, I, I don't know who he is. Despite the fact that this guy is my neighbor, I don't know who he is. He is like a ghost to me. You know? He's like someone that just doesn't exist in my world. And I stop and trying to think about the people that I treated as a ghost. People that I, I you know, I was afraid of them. That I treated as someone, this just doesn't exist. When I look for the religious people over there, the Pharisees, I kind of compared myself as well. Do you remember that the curved woman from yesterday? The guy was with angry and said, she just can't be here on Sabbath because she wants to be cured, but, you know, and Jesus said, oh, my God. Remember your donkey that you set free for them to get water. And, you, you, you know, you don't have this right to see this woman and just pretend that she's not here and just be, pretend that she's not from this world or she's, she's just like a ghost. You know, sometimes in our religion, we treat people like a ghost. We treat people like there is people that just don't exist. And it is easy for us to pretend that someone th does not exist. It's easy for us. And I go more far away from, from this. Sometimes we pretend that Jesus himself is a ghost just like the disciples. Because it's better for us to have a relationship with a ghost, with someone that really, you know, does not exist. It's more easy. Because you know the complicated thing for us as a Christians is to, to, to treat Jesus as a real person. Because when we treat Jesus as a real person, we really have to have a relationship with him. Because if he's a ghost, 
he's just a ghost. He's out there, you know, just out in the sky, in the heaven, and I'm here, and he's too far away, and he's just like mm, some kind of a, you know, cloud, ghost, or something. It's better for me to have a relationship with this thing that does not exist. When we consider him as a person, we have to have a relationship with him. And the thing is, for us to have a relationship with persons, for us to ha have a relationship with people, it is hard, isn't it? Even if it was your son. Even if it's your daughter. Even if it's, what, it's your dad or your mother or your grandpa or your grandfather. That's right. Why is that? Because they have their own character, they have their own beliefs, they have their own way of doing things, and sometimes I do not agree with them. So it's hard, isn't it? When you have your wife or your husband, and you've been taught to do stuff in a way, and you get married, and the other, peop the, the other person that get, got married with you, being taught in a totally different way when you do things. It's hard, isn't it? Who's married here? Just let me see your hands. <laughs> it's always easy. It's always easy. It's not. Everyone, everyone has its different taste. Everyone has his own character. And we have to have this relationship because we're married with them. And we have to have this relationship because we are family now. Same thing happened with our family, our blood. It's hard, it's not easy. So sometimes you have to, you know, to open up your hand and just, you know, Humble yourself. Ah, it's, it's so tough for us. Because we want to do the things in the way that we think that is right. And we completely disconsider the other part sometimes. And why with Jesus is different? It's not different. It is just different if you consider that Jesus is a ghost. But he's not a ghost. He's a person. You know, and I think, personally, I think lots of the problems that we have today as a religious people is that we are considering Jesus as a ghost, but not just him. We consider people as a ghost as well. We just, we just not, you know, into God getting to know the people and getting to know the difficulties of a relationship. We just don't want to do this. For us, it's better to disconsider these people, treat them as a ghost. Singing, praying, and doing stuff for Jesus, it is beautiful and waiting for um, um, a new kingdom, a new heavens and earth. This is beautiful. But we have to remember that the kingdom of God is already here. And the kingdom of God is formed by different people, not ghosts. So we have to encounter these people. We have to get in touch with the people that we consider as a ghost or we just be considering the humanity of them. They're not humans anymore. They're just someone. And the disciples were thinking that there was a ghost over there. And they have fear. 
Can you see it here? When we consider Jesus himself as a ghost, we have fear of him. When we consider that Jesus is a ghost, just like the disciples in that situation, we are afraid of him. Because we don't know who he is anymore. And we are afraid of sin. We are afraid of doing things. We are afraid and afraid and afraid. And picture an image of God. There is a God that is, you know, just ready to punish, to scare you, to put you in a position of terror. This is not the Jesus that I find in the Bible. In verse 27, Jesus said, immediately, take courage. Don't be afraid. It is I. In my translation, it said, it is I. But in Greek, literally is I am. It's the same expression that appears over there in the bush in fire with Moses. He said, what's your name? Moses said, what's your name? But I, I, I really have to, you know, to say something to the Pharaoh. And he said, just, just say to him, the I am sent you. And it's the same expression here. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am. You know, Jesus here, it's, it's assuming his position as a human and as a God as well. I am. You don't have to be afraid of me. On the contrary, you have to be courage. And you know, it takes courage to consider people. It takes courage for us to open our hearts for the people that we don't like. People that we've been disconsidering our entire religious life. It requires some courage to do that. But Peter, Peter is the, Peter's the funny guy. <laughs> Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. You know, my, I think my first request in that moment over there was, uh, if it's you, just stop the storm. Stop the wind, the waves, you know, just calm this, you know, this confusion here. Just calm them down, please. But no, Peter was the contrary. Said, "If it's you, I don't need I don't need you to calm the storm. I don't need you to calm the wind. I don't need you to calm the, you know, the waves. Just let me come to you. Let me come to you." So it's like Peter obeyed Jesus. It said, "Take courage," and he said, "Okay, I'll take courage." So despite all the storm, all the waves, and all the winds against me, I will go out of the boat and go straight. And forward. And Jesus said, Come. And the Peter got down out of the boat, and verse 29, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. And verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out and said, Lord, please save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Oh, you of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? You know, on a moment, Peter was the, the bravest guy, you know, in the boat. But in a glimpse of time, Peter was someone that was a little faith. You know, you can see the oscillation here. You can see that Peter is courage, but on the contrary, he has this tension of being courage and being afraid as well. This is the human being. Be encouraged sometimes and be afraid all, all the times. But in all that situations, Jesus was there immediately to rescue him. You see, and he repeats the, the word immediately on verse 27 and then on the verse, on the verse 31. Immediately, Jesus said, come. And immediately, Jesus said, I will rescue. I will rescue and reached out his hand and caught him. You know, and then verse 32, it said, when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him 
and saying, truly, you are the son, the son of God. They believed in him. Basically, here, they are saying that the son of God is not a ghost. The son of God is a person. The son of God is someone that I really have to have a relationship with him. The son of God is putting his kingdom right now, right in here in this earth, but at the same time, not in a fully capacity. But it's already started. And Jesus himself said, you guys has this re responsibility to treat people like people, not ghosts. To treat people like humans, not ghosts. To tell about me for humans, for people with all the tensions of sometimes they're afraid and sometimes they have all the courage in the world. Sometimes they, you know, they're down and sometimes they're, you know, straightened up and happy. This kind of people, you have to have a relationship. Because all of us is just like that. I am not special because I'm here in the pulpit or inside of this church. I am not more human than the people out there. And this is what Jesus said to the disciples, said to the, all the crowd over there, all the miracles, all the encounters. It was for us to understand that God see human beings, that God see me just, just as I am. And he really wants to rescue me. And not in, 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 in the boat, but in the middle of the storm, just like Peter. Not in the boat, safe in the boat, but in the middle of the water. On the water. And our last verse for today. John chapter 16, verse 33. And it fits with with this message for today and said, I have told you these things, Jesus' words, so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world you will have trouble. If we have a certainty in this life, is that we will have trouble. We will have storms, we will have waves and winds against us. This is the certainty that Jesus is talking to us tonight. But take heart. Don't be afraid. Take courage, he said, because I have overcome the world. Jesus himself overcome the world to show you that you are human. Jesus himself overcome the world to show you that this is not the end. Jesus himself overcome the world for you to understand that every human being deserved to be rescued by him. And our part in that, take courage to assume that for your life. Take courage to assume that and to show that for the humans out there. My appeal today is for you not to treat people as a ghost. It's for you not to treat people as someone that just doesn't exist and you completely disconsider them. And I'm not talking about your family. I'm not talking about the members of your church the people that you like, the people that are here every Sabbath, every day of the week with the, in the wake of prayer. I'm talking about the people that you, and you know who it is. You just consider them. Please don't do this. Take courage to assume a position 
of rescue us. Jesus encountered the disciples in the middle of the water. Encountered the disciples in the middle of the troubles and the storms. For them to see that he is not a ghost. He is a person. And he has all the will to rescue them. For them to have peace. For them to have the certainty of salvation. And may God bless you. For you to get this, this story and apply to your life. For you to take courage. And remember that he wants to rescue. Wherever you are. And whatever they are, he wants to rescue you. Despite your little faith, despite your doubts, He wants to rescue. And He wants to rescue not tomorrow, not a month, but He wants to rescue immediately. Immediately. So, how will be your, your answer? You answer like Peter? Jesus, please, if it's you, just let me walk on the water towards you. Is that your answer? I hope it is. Because this is my desire and my answer for my heart, for my life. May God bless you.